Cheers, guys. Epics 911, welcome to the Elitist Geek VR News for August 8th. There's a very common application from Google called Street View, and most of us have used it. It came in really handy for me, I think 2007 or 8 when it first launched, and we had the first Google Street filming vehicles roaming through the streets of the lower mainland in British Columbia where I live. A lot of my family landmarks, like places as a kid, houses I lived in, arcades I visited, sites of old stores or play places, right, were available on that first series of Street View images. And Street View, if, if you haven't used it, basically gives you a 360 from the street, what everything looks like. And yeah, I was able to literally preserve in an album pictures, thanks to Street View, of 98% of my childhood haunts, right? Which was awesome. Because sure enough, the next update, they were gone, replaced by the buildings in their place. Because where I live, hey man, it's wooden buildings, not brick primarily. And uh, stuff gets built over very quickly. The life cycles, 20 to 40 years, mow it down, build a new, right? And it's usually denser, denser, denser. Anyways, this guy named Aaron Fowley in the UK, using Google Street View, a little bit of his own programming, he created an app to use on the Samsung Gear VR that would allow him to cycle virtually from one end of the UK to the other. So starting in Lands End, England in the far south, all the way into the northern hinterlands of Scotland, which I just thought was really freaking cool. And I did mention in a previous video, probably about three weeks ago, where I said, look, I don't always want to exercise in games. Sometimes I want to sit on my arse, right? And just couch surf. Absolutely. But I also said in that video that, look, if it's specifically for exercise, that's not necessarily a bad thing. I may not always be in the mood for it, but if I am, it'd be kind of cool. For me personally, cardio machines are boring as hell. I've got two of them, an elliptical and an upright stationary bike. Scenery doesn't change. You can listen to music, watch TV shows. I get all of that. But I like cycling where the scenery changes and the weather here can get rainy a lot, right? So this is just a cool concept. I mean, I would love to use that. Hopefully he makes it public or somebody does a better version of it, whatever, to do stuff like cycle across, you know, my Dutch homeland from west to east. It's such a small country. You could literally probably do it within a week. And I'm sure people have. So all kinds of cool potential just to keep people motivated to do cardio. You can make little challenges for yourself. Bike across your state or your province or whatever, right? So kind of neat. Take a look at that. Links in the description or in the comments and description below. The next headline deals with Next VR. They've done a second round, so a Series B investment, second round of funding with a bunch of other companies to invest $80 million into virtual reality. And I mention this not because it's exciting, but there's some big companies in that. And I know at the end of the day, it sounds like a drop in the bucket, but this is probably the third or fourth time that I've reported on firms investing additional resources into virtual reality. And in the long run, that can only be a good thing because it helps this hobby of ours move forward, innovate, stay competitive, right? And best of all, get better. So all the stuff isn't fish lens quality and, you know, have that all really pick up, right? Which it's starting to, but there's a long way to go. The next article deals with a company or a VR developer and they created a game called Protocol Zero. In the game, they had you using as a control set a Bluetooth gamepad. I think it was the one for the Gear VR specifically. And sales were okay, but they weren't great. So they partnered with another firm to take advantage of the touch controls 
right of the uh, of the Samsung Gear to control yourself in the game. It's an FPS style game. Uh, it looks like you're constantly using night vision goggles when you're when you're going through the levels. Uh, so it'll be in the description below. But the cool part of that is as soon as they made that little bit of a change, right? And we talk about controllers and new peripherals and Oculus Touch is a perfect example of that. What is the adoption rate going to be? You know, hopefully there's devs that have been programming them alongside each other so that when the Touch does come out, their customers can play their game with probably a more superior control set, right? Again, if it's general hand controls, the touch and the Vive controller are going to be better than a steering wheel or a gamepad in a lot of situations. So it'll be neat to see how that unfolds, but 95% revenue increase for them, which is pretty good. Just changing the control set, but highlights how important controls actually are in terms of marketing, in terms of, you know, buy-in, customer acceptance, adoption rate, etc. The list is long, but it's an important point. So uh, I just thought that was neat. And keep that in mind when the Oculus Touch comes out. Because I know I'm going to keep an eye, not just forward, but backward. How much retro works with the Touch. So it'll be neat to see and to follow that moving forward. Now, this next article... Sorry, guys, this one's a doozy. Just a little sip of beer here. There we go. This next one blew my mind. The reason it blew my mind is when you are an older gamer like myself, let's just say you've been around for a lot of cyclical turns, right? You've seen things come, and you've seen things go. The older you get, you get this interesting phenomena. And how it goes is something is popular, it goes out, mm, but then it comes back. And the generation, that current generation, thinks it's their thing. But it wasn't. We had it too. That kind of stuff happens all the time. And I laugh, like console wars. Man, there were console wars in the 70s. There were console wars in the 80s. I could go on and on. Atari versus Intellivision, just as a couple here, right? Atari versus Coleco versus Intellivision. Commodore versus Apple. Or Atari, <laughs> Nintendo versus Sega. The list is long. We've seen it played out time and time again. So this article, which deals with the topic of putting virtual reality consumer machines into specific traffic demographic, you know, settings. And Basically, what they're saying is, wouldn't it be cool if we could put this stuff into malls and theater lobbies? The very first thing I thought of is, why does this sound so damn familiar, right? Because, and they say, wow, this is really going to help the devs get their games out there. The reason it sounds familiar is because this has happened already. <laughs> it's called arcade machines. And I've talked about it many times on this channel that they've gone out of style here in North America. They are alive and kicking in China and Japan. And a lot of that is cultural and, you know, socioeconomically driven. But the point is, that was something that happened in North America. The arcade devs partnered up with the theaters, the game companies, and shared the revenue, right, of, of that. And arcade machines were everywhere. But theater lobbies, malls were probably the number one setting the exact same thing they're saying in this article in fact i'm going to read out just a little snippet and what i'm going to do is replace every instance of a reference to virtual reality or the vr product specifically and replace it with arcade listen to how this sounds and you'll see that literally this is the same exact thing that happened before more specifically, movie theater lobbies or any other space like a mall or museum that could be a friendly home to a walk-by arcade machine. The hope is that by offering an easy way to deploy 
arcade machines, the industry can piggyback on top of movie theaters and other venues to create a profitable for game devs market nearly overnight. Revenue is split between the devs, the venue, and the arcade company. IMAX plans on doing this by the end of 2016 as well to introduce their arcade machines. Literally, you can sub one out for the other. The only point I'm making with that is it can get entertaining. And if you're an older gamer like me, you, know, you still may not agree with me, but if you do, we've seen it a few times. Yeah, there's a bunch even older than me, and they probably laugh because the same thing happened when my generation got something, right? Skateboards, perfect example. But the key difference is the movie theaters, the malls are definitely going to show people what they can bring in-house. And you could not do that with the arcade. So it's a little different in that respect, but the initial thought is just, it's just funny. So if take that context now and that little history and go and read the article on the link, it's not very long, but you will get a chuckle. And for those of you who shared in the arcade generation, right? Uh, probably chuckle a little bit more, but um, there you go. Now, a company called Space VR is going to launch in 2017 a VR-capable satellite. So this thing is going to be able to do VR stuff up in space. Now, the article didn't touch on it, but one of the things I think would be just wicked is to allow VR users on the ground to remote control stuff. Imagine being able to take control, like have a commercial satellite. You could rent time on it, right? Whatever. Maybe it's a space telescope for amateur astronomers. I mentioned that yesterday, right? That, that hobby. Maybe it's for entertainment companies or, or games or people who just want to look and see what space looks like, right? So all kinds of cool potential there. I say that a lot, but that is again what is so damn exciting about VR, right? With what just keeps making this such an exciting thing to follow. I don't get bored with it. I don't necessarily have all the time to play the stuff as I would like, but there's always something to look forward to. And said it before i will say it again it is a damn good time to be a gamer all right guys that's it for this news episode cheers and we shall see you on the flip side